Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house this day. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Very good. It is Reformation Sunday. So it's a festival of the Reformation we, we observe today. Uh, technically, a Reformation falls on October 31st, um, which is, of course, uh, also known as All Hallows' Eve. And uh, All Saints' Day is the next day on November the 1st. So next Sunday, we will be, uh, of course, celebrating All Saints' Sunday and also remembering those, commemorating those from our congregation, members of our congregation who have gone home to be with the Lord since last All Saints' Day. But today, Reformation Sunday, we again celebrate the wonder, wonderful truths of Scripture, the solas of Scripture, grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone, Scripture alone, that Luther rediscovered and uh, that we are blessed to know as by God's grace that through Christ alone do we have righteousness, do we have salvation. And we're going to be talking more about that in the sermon today. Uh, in from the epistle reading from Romans. So welcome in the Lord's name. Welcome to those who are watching on Facebook from home today or if you're watching this later on this week. Once again, we pray God's blessings on you too. You may, God, may, feel, or may receive the blessed gift of his word that strengthens your Christian faith. Of course, we always have a few announcements before we get going here today. First of all, the number one announcement for the how many weeks in a row now is what? Thank you. Fill out the welcome cards. I, every week I want to challenge the congregation to remind us that. Uh, both uh, members and visitors alike, if you could do that, that'd be great. And then you can turn those cards in uh, to the usher if you are coming up for the Lord's table today, Lord's Supper. Or if you're not, you can uh, just hand it to the usher later on uh, after the service. Uh, reminder that Saturday is before bed next week. You fall back in one hour as far as your time is concerned, turning your clocks back. And uh, we, of course, go back to regular standard time, which means you get an extra hour of sleep, but we know that it gets darker early. So we know that'll happen. And it tells us another sign that winter is coming, but that's next week. Uh, we had a LWML Zone 12 rally here yesterday. We had about 25 people that were in, in attendance. So a nice little gathering. It was very good. Uh, the ladies did a great job putting that on and had a great presentation by Dr. Chris Cody from our South Wisconsin District. He's the education executive, and he did a presentation on Lutheran education, so it was real good. And then we had another uh, person from LWML uh, from the district speak to us as well. So we had a good time yesterday with that. So thank you for, for uh, praying for that event. Uh, Ladies' Night Out is coming up uh, November 2nd at Pizza Ranch in Oshkosh. Uh, the sign-up sheets are on the tables at the entrances to the church. Oh, one other announcement that I did forget to mention this morning, because I forgot to write it down. The newsletters are out, so uh, you might have received it through your email already. If not, we have them in the uh, copies in the back, and also sent out, mailed out to our shut-ins as well. So the November newsletter is out and available. So with that, uh, the other thing is, please read your other announcements in your bulletin. Uh, do that later on today, see what's going on coming up here at Grace. So we are ready to worship. We are also excited to have our adult choir that's going to be singing today, uh, right after the first reading uh, on this Reformation Sunday. Uh, before we sing our opening hymn, we will say our memory verse for October. So let's speak that together. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Our opening hymn is hymn number 578, Thy strong word, we're going to sing stanzas one, three, four, and six.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. God is the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. As you reshaped the church at the time of Luther, reshape us in this generation, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God calls us to confess our sins. We observe a moment of silence for personal reflection and confession. God, you formed us in the womb, and you shape our lives to love and honor you and our neighbors. Yet we are by nature sinful and separated from you. We sin against you in thoughts, words, and actions. For the sake of Jesus, who was tempted in every way as we are, and yet without sin, we pray for your forgiveness. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Therefore, by the command of Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be in Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. And shall not be put to shame. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise, number 506, Glory Be to God the Father.
with you. Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave his life for ours on the cross that we now stand righteous before you by faith. Grant us to trust not in our own righteous actions, but always in Jesus alone, that we may live now and forever in the peace of God, which surpasses human understanding. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for our scripture readings. Our first reading for this day, for this festival of the Reformation, is from the 14th chapter of Revelation, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now have our ministry of music and our adult choir singing the piece called Here I Stand.
they all went to early service so they can <laughs> anyway anyway it was great to hear that and to uh, rejoice in that music today so our epistle reading today is from the third chapter of romans verses 19 through 28 and will serve also as our text for the sermon today now we know that whatever the law says it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to god for by works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes knowledge of sin but now the righteousness of god has been manifested apart from the law although the law and the prophets bear witness to it the righteousness of god through faith in jesus christ for all who believe for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. We stand as we speak together or responsibly the Alleluia verse and remain standing for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, fear not, little flock. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. We continue now with our hymn of the day, the hymn of the Reformation, number 656, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each of you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today, as we said, is Reformation Sunday. We celebrate that which God's Word declares to us most assuredly. And it's by grace through faith and on account of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we are saved from sin, death, and eternal damnation forever. I pray that this wondrous truth uplift you and sustain you today and always as all of us journey on in this world and as we continue to proclaim Jesus with our lips and with our lives all to his glory. The word of God for our meditation this morning is our epistle reading from Romans chapter 3 verses 19 through 28. You heard it read of course a moment ago and it will be read again as we go through the sermon this morning. My goodness! Maybe you've said that phrase before, that exclamation when you see something or hear something very surprising or shocking. And certainly it wouldn't be that big of a deal to say that, except for the fact that often, without us even thinking about it, we would assume that we have already some sort of goodness on our own. You know, my goodness. You see, all of us would like to think of ourselves kind of highly than we ought to think. Meaning that we like to think there's something automatically good within us. That everybody has good in their hearts and have the tendency to do good all of the time. But my friends, the Reformation would attack on what we would call the my goodness principle. For the sake of a quick review, here is what happened. The place, or the, I should say the date, was October 31st, 1517, on what we call All Hallows' Eve. The place, the Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany. The action, a man, a priest by the name of Martin Luther, of course, not Martin Luther King Jr., as some people would confuse with. This is Martin Luther, nailed 95 theses or statements to the church door on the, castle church, on the castle church. That doesn't sound like all that big of a deal except for the fact that these statements were written in reaction to the arrival of a Roman Catholic monk sent by the Pope by the name of John Tetzel. You see, in Rome, Pope Leo X wanted to finish the remarkable St. Peter's Cathedral. And so to raise money for the project, we might think a stewardship plan or project. He sent Tetzel throughout Germany to sell what is called indulgences. You see, indulgences were supposed to spare people from their punishment after death in an imaginary place called purgatory. So members of the congregation where Luther was preaching bought these indulgences. And as they did so, they were buying into, literally, the my goodness principle, because they believed that in buying these indulgences, they were buying the forgiveness of sins. This was a very good situation, they thought. I buy these indulgences, they help my standing before God, I support the castle church, or I support the cathedral, and all is well and good. My goodness. But Luther, as a good pastor, and by good I mean faithful pastor, was very concerned. These 95 propositions, these theses, were written on the question of forgiveness through indulgences. Printers reproduced them, copies spread from person to person, village to village, and the Reformation had thus begun. What principle was it that Luther rediscovered? Well, not my goodness, but rather Salvation by faith alone, a free gift of God's grace. Not my goodness, but God's goodness. God's undeserved goodness shown to us through our Savior Jesus Christ. Sadly, however, that my goodness principle lives on today. And the sign that it's living on today is guilt. Bill was the father of two children who attended a Lutheran school. 
Bill and his wife Susan were not Lutherans, they were, but they thought very highly of the school, so they decided to send their children there. Bill and Susan were having marital problems, so Bill went to his pastor for help. But what Bill's pastor said to him did not help at all. He told Bill that if you have enough faith, your problems will go away and you will do the right things. That advice did not help because Bill had already felt guilty for not spending more time with his wife, and now he felt guilty because he didn't have enough faith or was told to him that by the pastor. So he spent more time and more money on the children, and he tried to have more faith in Jesus. But the guilt remained. St. Paul would tell us today in our text that this is the way it will be and must be according to the my goodness principle. Earlier in chapter 3, Paul writes, there is no one righteous, not even one. That was in verse 10. There is no one who does good, verse 12. Do you get the picture yet? No more my goodness principle. It doesn't work. It never works. So what do we do? What does work? What we learn and experience is what Martin Luther learned and experienced on the basis of God's word and what he wanted his parishioners to learn and experience too. Paul introduces God's principle of grace in verse 21 with two of the mightiest little words in the entire Bible, but now. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short to the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. It's not my goodness. It's not your goodness. It's Christ's goodness. We return to the story of Bill and his family. He decided to visit the pastor at the Lutheran church, now that operated the children's school. Maybe this pastor would have some more answers for him, maybe some hope. So Bill recounted his struggles in his marriage and family and life and his fine, with his finances and with his faith. He said, Pastor, I try. I try really hard, but I can't seem to get rid of this load of guilt. And my family life is getting no better, even though I'm trying to do the right things. What is God doing? Where is he in my life? The pastor led Bill to this word in Romans and to the central teaching of God's word. This same teaching became central in the teaching of Martin Luther and the entire Reformation. This teaching, this good news, brought Reformation, that is, faith and life reformed and renewed to Bill. And it brings reformation and renewal to our lives again and again. What teaching is this? It's the principle of God's Christ's goodness and his good work for us. The pastor explained to Bill that we are commanded to be good. But we cannot because of the sin that's in us. Not only just good, but perfect. Ye shall be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. We can't do that because of the sin. We need help. We need God's help. And his help is not, well, I'll do my part, but now you better do your part. That working with God, if you will, that we have to do some sort of achievement to earn his favor, his forgiveness. That's false. That's, that's wrong. No. It's the biblical and eternal truth that we are justified by grace through faith. This means that Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior, who is without sin, set things right between us and our God by his good and sufficient sacrifice on the cross. Jesus lived the perfect life we could never live. He died for our sin, and he rose from the dead to prove that we are forgiven and that we are right with God. It's not about our goodness, but Christ's goodness. And when pastor, the pastor was done explaining that, he says, Bill, do you believe this? Bill felt, felt as though a tremendous weight had been lifted. He responded, so it's not about me, but about what Jesus has done for me? The pastor said, no, it's not about you. It's about Jesus. 
I've never heard it explained to me that way before, he said. I believe it, Pastor. I believe it. You see, my friends, such a faith has a powerful impact on our living as well. Luther wrote in his commentary on Romans that the knowledge and confidence in God's grace makes man glad, bold, and happy in dealing with all creatures. It is the work of the Holy Spirit that does this, renewing us or in renewing us in living for him, living for Jesus. It's because of him that we are glad and that we are willing to serve others, to even suffer for our Lord because of God's grace. And that's why Luther says, it's impossible to separate works from faith, quite as impossible as to separate heat and light from fire. Because God's grace changes us, and it's faith that trusts God's grace for all things. For Bill, that grace of God changed him. He left the pastor's office that day no longer a guilt-ridden man. His burden was now lifted. Christ had borne his burden of his sin on the cross. He was forgiven. Because of our Lord's resurrect, death and resurrection, Bill knew where he stood with God. God still loved him. He always loved him. But now this gave him peace and hope and even boldness. So end of story, right? No, Bill also knew that this renewed relationship with God did not remove the difficulties of his life. Contrary to what people might think, that once you become a Christian or that, you re that you've got this burden off, everything will go well in your life. And we've talked about that before here on Sunday mornings. No, Bill knew there was much work to do in improving his relationship with his wife and his children. He left the pastor's office knowing that he would need God's strength given through his powerful word and spirit to help him work out things in his family. But this also gave him peace and hope and boldness because he knew he wasn't left to his own devices. He had God's help. Dear people, you too have God's help. You don't have to go it alone. When you try to strive to live the life that God has called you to live, it's not on you. It's depending on Christ. You have God's help. He's right there for you. He's in his word. As you receive his body and blood today, you have that strength as well. Don't just go through the motions and just keep on doing what you've been doing. But remember you have help with God through his work, his goodness. We have his strength to live for him. Today, I challenge you to leave the my goodness principle behind and instead trust another principle, God's principle, the principle of faith centered on Christ's goodness for you, on his grace alone. May our God and Savior grant that for his sake to all of us. Amen. And now may God's peace, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard our hearts and our minds through faith in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, having heard God's word, we make bold confession of our faith as we speak the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with God's grace, founded in faith, and nourished by the word, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. For the church, that we faithfully use our freedom in the gospel to love and serve God, both God and our neighbor. Preserve the church from discord and strife. Let the world see that we are yours, O Lord, by our love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, for those entrusted to govern our nation, state, and local community, guide them and help them to care justly and mercifully for all the people they serve. For the members of our armed forces, including those who now are dealing with the, the, the strife in the Middle East, that you would guard protection to all those that are in that part of the world as well. Indeed, Lord, for victims of warfare and violence and for our enemies, we pray that peace may prevail for all. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who are suffering, including Gloria Domsky, Chris Lewis, James Leblonsky, Rochelle Fisher, Jan Tix, Jen Christensen, and also Beverly Crum. And those we name silently in our hearts as well. We pray that their pain and anxiety be relieved according to God's will. For those who mourn the death of loved ones, we pray that God calm their troubled hearts and give them peace to face the days ahead in the confidence that he will never forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for those who visit this congregation. That they may find here a hospitality that bears witness to the kingdom of heaven. For all who travel, we pray that they may arrive safely at their destinations. For all the households of this congregation, grant that they be havens of peace and places where Christ is proclaimed and lived. Lord, in your mercy. For those who will be attending the Lord's table this day and receive the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. They come together with repentant hearts, casting all their sin on you, and then leaving this table in joy with the knowledge that their sins are forgiven and strengthened to lead a new and holy life to the glory of Christ's holy name and put the old ways behind them and seek to serve the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for this holy assembly, that together we use our gospel freedom responsibly. By the Holy Spirit, grant that we all undergo ongoing, ongoing reformation of our hearts and minds, and in the proper stewardship of our time, talents, and money, continuing to be faithful partners in ministry. Lord, in your mercy, let us give thanks for those who have gone before us and are with the Lord, especially Martin Luther and all reformers of the church. Sustain us in this earthly journey so that, trusting in the promises of Jesus, we too will know the joy of all those who have died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, hear these prayers of your faithful people. By your grace, grant us those things that you see what we need for the sake of our Redeemer and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We now receive our tithes and offerings for our Lord.
We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Before we sing our offertory, I just want to make this one announcement about our practice of a Holy Communion. We practice close communion, and there's a statement in your bulletin regarding that. Uh, so if you are a confirmed member in a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation in good standing and you'd like to receive the sacrament, please do. If not, uh, and you are, but you are baptized, you may also come up if you so desire and receive a baptismal blessing. Just simply cross your arms like this so I know that. I'll be happy to give you a blessing like I do with uh, the little children uh, as well, which is certainly a, a wonderful thing to hear as well, but you're not required to do that. If you'd like to learn more about what we believe, teach, and confess about the Lord's Supper and about the teachings of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, I'd be happy to speak with you. You can ask my, me after the service today and uh, go forward from there. So with that, we sing the offertory created me. Please stand. Be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who gave his life on the cross in order that our hearts may be reshaped to reflect not our own goodness but God's. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Please stand. Let us pray. You, O Lord, are the potter, we the clay. By Christ's body and blood in this sacrament, you shape us to be the body of Christ. Send us out from this table, forgiven and restored, that we may freely bear the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Why has God placed Grace Lutheran Church in Amro, Wisconsin? God has placed Grace Lutheran Church in Amro to teach his truth so that all may know Jesus' love. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <coughs> Please be seated. Our closing hymn is one stanza. One stanza only, 582. God's word is our great heritage. Thank mm -hmm. you.